So for a while now, I've been seeing these McFarlane Space Marine action figures, and they look pretty cool, but there's just one problem. I'm a grown man. I don't play with toys. I play with models, okay? There's a big difference. So if I'm gonna enjoy these things at all, I'm gonna have to convert them down to a Warhammer scale so I can use them on the tabletop. Today, I'm gonna show you how to convert a McFarlane action figure into an awesome statue that you can use on the tabletop for all your games of Warhammer 40,000. This project will fit in nicely with the Space Marine Fortress that I've been building on the channel for a while, and will get us one step closer to building the Blood Angels Fortress Monastery, the Arx Angelicum. Let's get right into it. So first of all, of course, we're going to start with a McFarlane action figure. I went for this one with the Hellblaster because it's a Blood Angel, and it was on sale on Walmart.com for something like $13, I think. I just checked and the sale is no longer on, but I'll put an Amazon link in the description if you want one. I think regular price is around $20. I knew I wanted a statuesque pose, something classic and inspiring. So of course I went with the old Captain Morgan style, one foot up on the tactical rock. With the marine pointing to a distant galaxy to be conquered or something. I like the pose because it's not explicitly warlike. Yeah, he's got armor, but he's not going to be holding a weapon, and I kind of like that. These things are really poseable, and all the limbs are on ball joints, so I popped the head off, and at this point I started noticing all these horrible mold lines everywhere, so I took a moment to trim those down with a hobby knife. Next, to lock the pose in place, I started applying thin super glue to the joints because it seeps into everything, and then I sprayed some super glue accelerant so it would bond instantly. Some of the joints that are a little less accessible, like the torso, I popped open and put super glue inside. To make a base, I started by making a hexagon on some medium chipboard with a pencil and a compass. We need to make three hexagons for this project, but I'm only going to show this once. You go from point to point, to point to point, like this, like this. Very simple. Pretty cool technique. I used some tin foil to bulk up a rock shape, and then cover it with some super sculpy oven bake polymer clay. I make a rough stony texture with the handle of a small paintbrush, but this is going to be part of the statue, and the rocks on statues are never that realistic, so I kind of phoned it in, but it looks pretty good. Now guys, these videos take a while to make, and I'm now doing this as my full-time job, so I hope you don't mind if I take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Warhammer 40,000 Lost Crusade. Developed by Newverse, it's the first officially licensed Warhammer 40k game of its kind, and it's a great way to get your 40k fix while you're out and about, because it's right there on your phone. If you go down in the description of this video, I have a link for a gift code for you guys that will give you $10 worth of in-game rewards. With the new update, you can choose from one of four of your favorite chapters, and each one has their own buff, base design, and chapter skills. Now, they don't have my beloved Blood Angels, so I play as the Imperial Fists, but that's okay, because when is, you know, showing favoritism to one legion over another ever led to anything bad? Players can also go to the Lost Crusade HTML to join the Rally or Chapter for the Imperium event and invite friends for more chances of rewards. It's really fun, it's got a great story with a great PvE mode, the 3D models in-game are faithful to the tabletop models that we know and love, and it's a really great looking game visually. Some of the graphics in the background have actually inspired me for future projects on this channel, because there's some pretty cool stuff in there. So check it out guys, like I said, there'll be a link in the description that leads to my gift code, which will give you $10 of free stuff in-game. So thanks very much to Warhammer 40,000 Lost Crusade and Nuvers for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the build. With my base fully sculpted, I put the whole thing in the oven at 275, that's Fahrenheit, for 30 minutes to be hardened. I'm pretty sure paper like the chipboard I use doesn't combust until it reaches 451 Fahrenheit, but I'm not a fire marshal, so do this at your own risk. Now, you could easily make a statue with the head that comes on the action figure. It's a nice Primaris head, looks fine, but I wanted to take this a step further and sculpt my own head from scratch. I started by screwing a screw into a block of wood to act as a handle for me to hold on to while I sculpted. Then I formed a blob of green stuff around the screw head, because this will stick nicely and keep the head from rotating as I sculpt. Next I had some Sculpey on top of the green stuff core to make my basic cranium shape. The human cranium is... Kind of like a ball, I guess. Meanwhile, I'm going to use green stuff to cover up some of the gaps in the armor that look like toy joints. Under their armor, Space Marines wear something called the Black Carapace, which is something like a wetsuit with matrix plugs in it so they can connect to their armor. So in the joints, I'm going to sculpt this rib texture using the back of the hobby knife and a silicone sculpting tool. The knee in particular had this huge gap that looked really weird, so I did my best. 
Let's talk about the face for a second. Space Marines aren't just ordinary men. Sure, they start that way, but then they go through a process of physical transformation. New organs are added, and these organs secrete hormones that cause intense and radical changes to the Space Marines' bones and muscles until they end up as the 8-foot-tall superhumans that we know and love. When I hear this, I can't help but think of the real-world condition of pituitary gigantism or acromegaly. People with this condition often have a tumor on their pituitary gland that causes it to overproduce growth hormone. This leads them to grow to an extremely large size, sometimes as large as 8 feet tall. But human growth hormone also affects the facial features. The brow, the feet, the hands, the ears, and the jaw all grow at a rate faster than the rest of the body, leading to a very distinct look. Many of the giants that have existed in pop culture, such as Andre the Giant, had this condition. So in my mind, it makes sense to me that a space marine would also have a prominent brow and a prominent jaw. With that in mind, let's get started on sculpting the face. I start by adding a layer of green stuff to the cranium ball and a bunch of extra green stuff where the face is going to be. I start by forming a nice prominent brow and two hollows for the eye holes, then push and prod the putty to create a nose and cheekbones. With the eye sockets and nose in place, I keep adding putty as needed to the lower half of the face and go through a pretty imprecise process of pushing around the putty to create the mouth and chin with the right sort of likeness that I want. I noticed several likenesses as I went that I didn't really lean into. At last I end up with something that I like. Before I attempt the eyes, I'm going to let the putty cure completely. Next, I add some eyes to the eye socket of the head. Pushing small balls of putty into the eye holes, I then try to sculpt them into eyelids with the tip of the knife. It's not perfect, but I'm okay with it. The head is ready to be mounted. I remove it from the block and screw the neck into the neck piece. I needed a bit of cutting to fit, but it worked out. Smoking. Space Marines sometimes change to resemble their gene sire, the Primarch. And Sanguinius is famed for his wonderful hair, so let's give this guy a nice flow. I start by applying some sheets of green stuff, then create a nice part at the Widow's Peak. To sculpt the hair, rather than focusing on individual strands, I focus on larger, chunky locks. Too many strands would make the hair appear messy and greasy. Time to mount this guy on the stand. I used a short length of armature wire, drilling corresponding holes into the foot and the base. I then use some two-part epoxy putty to make a nice secure bond. Let's make a plinth or pedestal. I used a long strip of foam core board, cutting mostly through the six segments, then folding the board to make a nice hexagonal prism. I glue the statue's base on top of there with a bit of hot glue, and for the base I do two more hexagons forming a sort of shallow stairs on all sides. This will really help the stability of the piece too, because the action figure's got a decent heft to it. I wanted this to feel like a war memorial or something, so I used some polymer clay to make a little plaque for the front. I also added a piece from the Baal Predator kit, a nice piece of Blood Angel's iconography. I simulate some text with a few pokes of mechanical pencil, then bake it hard. To protect and add texture, I paint the base with a mix of pre-mixed spackle and grey paint, stippling to get a nice pebbled effect. Now I thought it'd be cool to add a little shrine near the plaque on the front. So I piled up a bunch of skulls from the Warhammer skull box, a few other bits from the Space Marine sprues, and then added a bunch of lengths of styrene rod to suggest little candles. I imagine these are the skulls of loyal chapter serfs rather than Space Marines. I think the remains of Space Marines would probably be handled with more reverence. I thought about adding some helmets and weapons as well, but I think those things would be too valuable to leave lying around unattended, so I decided not to. All right, it's ready for some paint. Kind of looks like Captain Planet at this stage, don't you think? I start by removing the pauldrons and power pack just for ease of access to all the little crevices. And then I prime the piece black with a two-in-one primer and paint. Now I wanted this piece to look like a bronze or copper statue. And when copper oxidizes, it gets a beautiful gray-green patina called verdigris. Now a lot of people have achieved an oxidized effect with a wash over a metallic copper colored paint. Games Workshop even makes a paint specifically for this called Nylac Oxide. To me though, the results look cool but they don't look quite right. Most statues that have been left outside for a long period of time are fully oxidized. There is no trace of the metallic color left. The Statue of Liberty is a great example of this. 
So I started by painting the whole piece a pale minty green. This paint is deliberately not very saturated and is only very slightly green. In general, I like to keep my terrain pieces more muted in color because it makes them more versatile and allows the models to shine. This is for my Blood Angels after all, and a bright saturated green would clash with their red armor. To make this feel well weathered and old, I applied a black wash liberally, gradually adding more and more streaks of discoloration where I imagined rainwater would run down. These streaks are what will make this look more like a statue and less like a giant green soldier. In particular, I darkened one side of his face. Weathering doesn't care about highlighting an area of focus like a face, and this just helps the realism that this is in fact an inanimate object and not supposed to be some sort of giant soldier on the battlefield. I use contrast paints to paint in the details at the base, and that's it. The statue is ready for the battlefield. So there you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed this build, I'm really excited to try this out on the table. Now as I mentioned before, I'm now running this channel as a full time job, and some of you might also know that my wife is pregnant with our first child. So if you want to support the channel, now is a really great time. There will be a link in the description below for Eric's Hobby Workshop merch, we've got some cool t-shirts and hoodies and stuff up there, and some mugs as well. And there's also a link to my Patreon. Now the patrons are the beating heart of this channel, the real ones who've supported me, and Patreon support is so appreciated. If you've ever thought about joining, now is a great time. Our Discord server is popping, and as I said, I've got a kid coming, so help, please. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'd appreciate your support if you're interested. Thank you once again to all my patrons. You guys are the best, and we'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.